Hello everyone, it's week four of the Mixed Media Experiments prompt in the Facebook group, the Mixed Media Emporium. And this week we're going to be monoprinting without a jelly plate. I know that um, a lot of you don't have one, either because they're not accessible where you are or they're too expensive. Jelly plates are really expensive, but you don't need one to achieve results like this. Um, from, from monoprinting, these are just so much fun. So I'm just going to talk you through um, the materials that you can use some regular plexiglass for, for mine. This you can pick up really cheaply um, from a lot of hardware stores. You may even have some floating around in your garage. I think this particular piece here was left when Sam smashed the shed window a couple of years ago. Does anybody remember the vlog whilst we were um, vlogging our Sunday barbecue and Sam put his football straight through the shed window and we just replaced it with some plexiglass and I think these were just a couple of bits that were left over. You can of course um, use Use a glass chopping board that would be absolutely perfect a piece of acetate would work even tin foil um, what you're looking for is something that is non-porous I'm just looking at these as well even your stamping blocks would be absolutely ideal here um, now this one is gridded on one side but it's smooth on the other although you can see the grids underneath and the smooth side would just be absolutely perfect for mono printing um, other things that you will need are um, of course a wad of paper now I'm going to be using my plexiglass and I've just cut some sheets of paper to six by four inches which are just ever so slightly larger than the plates that I'm going to use so I've got a whole stack um, of paper then I've got things like bubble wrap and um, bubble wrap is really fun for mark making um, just other pieces of, of texture as well just um this is a piece of shelf liner I've got no idea um, where that came from um, of course rough burlap here um, that's out of a, a biscuit box I do believe things like sponges the end of a cotton reel of course you can use um, stamps as well um, foam stamps work especially well I've also got um, a couple here that are kids ones these um, are just just cheap kids ones that I've had when I very start, uh, first started playing with mixed media um, I've also got some of these silicon placemat type things and um, these are just absolutely ideal so really have a think about what you can use pieces of lego for instance and also I've got um, a couple of catalyst to, uh, catalyst tools here but you know a fork or especially a wooden one would work equally as well batteries batteries are really fun to stamp with and again this is just um, a piece of packaging and then of course you're going to need a selection of paints any brand of paint will work these are just really really cheap ones and I'm going to be using these today because I've had these for um, forever and these are starting to um, dry out now and really you uh, need using up. Now the other thing you'll need is either a brayer or just a regular paintbrush just to spread your paint on. Now I've chosen two colours here I've already given them a good shake sort of like a grey blue and a magenta so I'm just going to put a small amount. Now you want um, enough paint um, to get good coverage but not so much that it's sliding around all over the place and you're just going to have to experiment um, and get a feel for the amount of paint that you will need so I'm just going to roll this on as I say you don't need a brayer you could easily do this with um, a paintbrush so here we go I'm just going to get a good covering all over my plate there we go like that keep your brayer if you're using one this way up otherwise it will just stick to your paper now I've got two pieces of bubble wrap here so let's put this on I've got one with really large bubbles and one with small bubbles so let's do a mixture of the two here give it a good squish remove that and of course we've now got some um, lovely marks I just want a bit more in the center there like that I love how that looks grab a piece of paper you need to work quite quickly with this because it dries much quicker than paint does on a jelly plate and once it's dry you're just not going to lift anything else up just really give um, a good squish on the back of your paper smooth it down and then lift it up and just look how pretty um, that is we can just make some really interesting backgrounds using this technique I've got um, a lovely blue which again I'm going to use with the grey let's see what we end up with here I'm not bothering to clean my plate as you can as you can see 
Oh, come on, out you come. You see, these paints are getting quite old, hence I'm trying to use these up. And again, I'm just going to spread, spread that out. I like those two colours together. That's um, that's really, really nice. Have a bit um, over there as well. What shall I use for texture um, this time? I've got a foam stamp. Foam stamps are absolutely brilliant for, the, for this kind of thing. And you're starting to be able to see some of that lovely magenta um, underneath as well. So I'm just going to randomly stamp um, all over that. I've also got um, a rubber on the end of a pencil. What have I done with it? Hang on, let me just reach over. And what I can do is just use the rubber end just to put some dots in the blanker places as well. You can use batteries for um, mark making. Um, you know, there's just so many different things that you can you can use. So there we go. And then grab another piece of paper and let's see what we get from this one. This one here. Smooth that all over the back and see what this one reveals. Again, just really, really pretty. Now, another thing we can do is use two of these together. So I'm just going to spread some pink paint out on this second plate um, here. I'm going to use a clean brayer for that, um, just so that I don't contaminate my colours. So I'm just going to spread spread that all over there like that. And I'm going to use this one to um, stamp with. I'm going to use the leftover paint that's already on the roller. I think that should, that should be enough. And this time I've got one of these kids um, foam stamps. And what I'm going to do is just dab it. In fact, we'll start in the middle. I'm just dabbing it in the paint again just to get some pattern going in my background. Try and make sure that I've got enough space here to work on and we'll have another one down here like that. Press quite hard. Grab another piece of paper. Let's see what we end up with with this one. This one here. A lot more subtle this time, but I just really like that. This time I've got a couple of shades of green. Probably a bit too much of the lighter green, but that's that's okay. And again, I've got um, some magenta just on, on this plate here, over to my right-hand side. Let me just move this over so that you can see a little bit better. And this time what I'm going to do is um, just dab it in the individual areas of the plate. I might get more colour by doing it um, this way. Oh, there we go. I like that. I like that um, a lot. Whoops, that one's smudged, but that's fine. And again, let's take a take a pull. This one might work better because I've used more paint. See that? That's beautiful. Let's use a fork and see if we can get some interesting patterns by, by using that. So I've just got a fork and all I'm going to do is just do some squiggly, squiggly lines. That's that one there, really interesting. Let's do something with the magenta that we've got left on this plate here. This time we can perhaps use um, some batteries. I've got um, a battery here. And again, if I'd used the second plate, I could have dabbed that in um, to add some more colour if I'd wanted to. But let's try, let's try this. I've got 
got um, some paint down on my paper here and I just want to see what happens if we remove some of the, the paint. I'm just using an ordinary kitchen towel here just to remove some of the paint. So let's flip it round um, the other way and do the, do the other side. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then I've got um, another piece of paper here and that was just plain magenta that I used the excess paint off the roller. Let's apply this on top and see what we get here. You see, I love that. That's just beautiful. This time I've used these two colours of paint here and I'm just going to try removing the paint with a sponge. We can have some swirly prints like this. Let's try a smaller one as well. We can overlap some of these just to make it look more interesting. There we go. Let's see what we get from, from this one here. if we use a stencil let me just see if I can get this in a good position I'm going to place the piece of paper over the top and line it up with the edge of my my plate and we might be able to get two prints out of this I've used turquoise um, white and purple for this one here so let's get rid of the paint through the stencil hmm, not much at all there but um, but that's okay oh I think this one's going to be good though Let's try, let's try this. See if I can um, lift it up. Oh, that's pretty. I like that one um, a lot. So use your stencils as well. I want to see what will happen if I use a feather. This is just a craft feather. Um, pick one from your garden. And if I had one that was the right size and, um, and shape, I would have used one. But they're all either too big or too small. And you can see that I'm breaking um, the, the feather particles up, um, strands, fronds, whatever they're called, just to make it look more interesting um, when we take um, a print. So I'm going to try black, I think, for this. That's gesso. Um, you want paint for this. So I'm just going to put some black black down. That should, that should do it. Um, where's my grey up? I've got some blue on this, but that's okay. Let's see what happens with them um, with this. So I'm just going to place my feather on like that. Grab a piece of paper, squish it down and in fact what I'll do is I'll grab a larger piece of A4 paper which I've just got over to my right hand side just so that I can really squish down better and really get in where the spine of the feather is as well just to accentuate hopefully the detail. Let's see if this works. Of course you could use leaves as well from the um, garden. That should, that should do it. Ooh, let's see what we end up with. And I hope that I haven't um, left this too long. Now you see from that one there, not much at all. But let's see what happens if we pull um, another print. And of course, isn't it typical? I've run out of um, my six by four paper. Never mind, we'll take a, take a larger print instead. That's cool. Just look at that. I just want to try that um, again with the feather. So see what happens if we do it a, a second time. And I've got um, a different idea this time as well. So I'm going to place my feather back on. We'll use the other side of that just to pull the initial print. So 
so that's that one there not very exciting but we'll take the feather feather off again and this time I've printed um, a piece of plain turquoise paper and I just want to see what happens if we go over the top and whether we end up with anything more interesting nothing ventured nothing gained as they say I love that that's just gorgeous let's try some skeleton leaves I've got three here um, three different sizes there we go um, that's how I'm going to arrange them so I'm going to put my base layer down first let's put some lime green so I'm going to put that as a base down on my plexiglass a bit more paint I think not quite enough this one is nearly nearly finished as you can um, you can see so let's place the leaves down and I'm going to place them with the vine um, it, of course it's a faux vine because these are these are not real that way that way round there we go grab a piece of paper and take that first first layer off and really press press that down we might get some a good image on both of them these as well uh, not so much not really very exciting there and let's see what we end up with underneath this one this one here and again if I'd um, got a patterned a coloured piece of paper I think it would have been even better so I want to try this again but let's try this first I just love experimenting because you just never know what you're going to end up with you see a good impression there but the, the paint was a bit dry this time I've pulled a print, just a plain print, with some of the turquoise paint. So I'm just going to pop that to one side. Let's grab the green again and let's try it um, again. I'm not cleaning my plate, I'm just going straight over the top. This time I'm using um, a darker, a darker green. So cover, cover my plate like like that that will do and then what have i done with my skeleton um leaves where's the other one gone hang on let me I find them. them um i think the purple one's a different one but that's okay so again i'm just going to remove that first layer so this one wasn't very exciting to start off with remove these but then i just wonder will these fit inside there mm. Maybe we can try that again. I don't want this paint to um, dry. So I've pulled those off. Bring back my turquoise plain print. Where's it gone? Let's work quickly and stick this over, over the top. See what we end up with this time. And I think this might be um, a bit more interesting. Look at that. So you could do this, of course, with garden leaves as well. Now, I've ended up with a wad of really interesting um, backgrounds from the prints that I pulled. I've had these weighted down underneath the heavy book um, just because they were um, quite warped and curly. But let me just give you a quick flick through. So, of course, I think that was um, one of the fun foam stamps I used. Bubble wrap. That was um, square fun foam. That was the stencil that I used. Um, that one there, I think, was catalyst tool. Um, that one there just came out as sort of like a dendritic print that was a battery um, that was the kids fun foam stamp with the flower design I love these I think those are really cool um, particularly like um, those ones those ones there bubble wrap again the colors in that one are absolutely gorgeous I've got some um, metallic paint in that one I love this one as well that one's really interesting now I used um, a, cr a crown foam stamp um, to do that one there just um, plonked the crown on in various orientations I think I used some bronze metallic paint for that one some of these I did before I switched the camera on when I'd first started experimenting I love this one here and um, not so keen on that part of the print but I especially like this part here so again you know if there are parts of prints that you don't like you don't have to use all of it 
Um, so just quickly flicking through, this is what I've got. This one was done with the cotton reel, both ends of the cotton reel, more um, bubble stamp. I wish I'd experimented um, more with these. That was the, the these are just silicon mats um, and that was that one there. I didn't try this one here. I forgot I had this one and I wish that I had because that um, worked especially well. Battery um, again. Um, and again, I think these are just the foam stamps. Oh, that's another one of the um, flower stamps as well. So let me show you what I did with the feather print that I pulled, because this one, I think, has to be um, my absolute favourite. And I decided to um, trim around the edges and mount this onto a piece of caddy watercolour paper and then black cardstock. And I just think that's made a beautiful, beautiful greetings card. I also pulled... Um, a leaf print from the garden as well. Um, after I'd switched the camera off, I just went and grabbed a leaf from the garden. So I've got the first print um, or the first and then the um, second one, which I've trimmed around both of these. This was the print I did with the wooden fork. So that was where I just swirled the wooden fork like this through the print. And again, I've trimmed that and popped it onto a piece of um, watercolour caddy paper. And I think I'm just going to stick that down down like that and mount that onto a piece of black cardstock as well for another greetings card because I just think those um, just look so striking. My finished card and I think it turned out absolutely beautifully. Now of course I did these prints here um, using these leaves and I don't think they turned out anywhere near as well and I think it was because the veins were just a lot more prominent on this one here. This is more of an evergreen. Um, this is a hydrangea plant whereas these these ones here were on the turn um, and maybe as well that it was the orientation that I put the leaves on the jelly plates. I put this one um, vein faced down whereas I've got a feeling I put these vein faced up. So do experiment because I think you just get some wonderful effects from um, using leaves. And I've made a few more cards as well using some of the more colourful backgrounds. My friend Laura sent me a whole bag of um, beautiful butterflies in Happy Mail a couple of weeks ago and they've been sat on my desk waiting for me to use and they were just absolutely perfect for using on these gorgeous um, mono printed backgrounds so there we go just look at these and again all I've done is mounted these on a piece of um, caddy watercolour paper I've inked these with distress ink or at least um, a couple of them I have um, I think I left this one um, white um, but they just look absolutely gorgeous so that's another idea as to how you can use these beautiful beautiful mono prints who needs a gel plate I'm absolutely chuffed to bits with these prints. I think they've turned out absolutely beautifully. So just to recap, the prompt for this week is mono printing without a jelly plate. And let's just go over some of the things that you can um, use to create your mono prints. So, of course, I used plexiglass, um, but I think even better would be either a glass cutting mat or even a glass chopping board. You could use acetate. So, you know, that would work absolutely fine. Plastic packaging, especially the thicker plastic packaging you know some of the things that were used for the dendritic printing at the beginning of the month stamp blocks would be absolutely ideal um, freezer paper I think would work for this as well the shiny side of freezer paper and of course tin foil so you know use whatever you have and please do give it a try it's just so much fun now, of course, I look forward to seeing your interpretations of this prompt. And for anybody who would like to follow along with us, I'll leave the link to the Facebook group, the Mixed Media Emporium, in the description box below. Um, but, you know, if you enjoyed this video, as always, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. Do let me know what you think in the comments below. And thanks for watching. Take care, everyone. And I'll see you all again soon. Bye for now.